Okay, well, it's six o'clock. Uh, we'll get started on time here. Uh, hello, my name is Eddie Cummins. I am the Smart General Manager and uh, want to thank everyone for attending tonight's uh, strategic planning uh, workshop on extensions. Um, before we begin, uh, I want to turn some time over to Director Deb Fudge to say a few words and welcome each of you on behalf of uh, the Smart Board of Directors. Director Fudge. Okay, thank you, Eddie. Um, we'd like to welcome you to SMART's fourth strategic planning workshop. Thank you for joining us tonight and for choosing to spend your valuable time supporting our strategic planning process. As a public transportation agency, community input is core to our values and ultimately our success. The focus of tonight's workshop is railway extensions. And I really wanted to lead off this session because I'm so excited that we will be completing two extensions or an extension and a new rail station coming up really shortly. The Petaluma North station is slated to open late 2024 and the Windsor station, which is an extension will open in roughly April, 2025. So I really wanted to be here for this session in particular. Since voters approved measure Q in 2008, SMART has never lost sight of its founding vision of providing passenger rail service from Larkspur to Cloverdale. We have had our challenges with the Great Recession of 2008 and 9 and the pandemic of 2020, but we have never wavered from this vision. We have made significant strides in achieving this vision through the continued pursuit of grant funding. We have made real progress, but we certainly have more work to do. This is what makes the 2024 strategic plan so important. Extensions are one of our four strategic objectives. Strategic planning is a tool that helps us to understand what is most important and to think creatively about how to achieve our objectives. And tonight, we thank you for helping us on the strategic journey, and we look forward to your input. Thank you, Director Fudge. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh-oh. One second, I'm just gonna get this screen up. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. Thank you Thank for your you. patience. So here's an overview of tonight's workshop. We'll go over just a few ground rules. Um, we will talk about the strategic planning process. I want to talk about a timeline to complete the plan. I uh, want to just highlight some of our prior planning activities. And then we'll do a quick review of the 2022 listening sessions. And then we'll really get into the heart of tonight's workshops. Um, uh, where we'll be asking you for some feedback and 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 uh, documenting some of your uh, uh, comments via Mintimeter. And then we'll have an open discussion at the end where you can share more of your thoughts and opinions. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, just some meeting ground rules. Um, when you wish to speak, please use the raise hand feature. Uh, to raise your hand, go to Reactions and click Raise Hand. Keep your mic muted until you're called upon to speak. Please stay focused on the question at hand. Keep an open mind. Be respectful. We have a lot of people um, in the room tonight and will obviously have some differing opinions. Be considerate and allow time for others to speak. We're not going to have a timer here tonight, but we are asking everybody to kind of follow that two-minute rule. Next slide, please. So we want to hear from you, and as I mentioned, we'll be using a product called Mintimeter where we'll be able to um, really document in real time uh, some of your ideas and thoughts. And you can do this one of two ways. You can use your phone um, and scan the QR code, or you can go to minty.com and put in the access code 61208997. And I think we will also be putting a link to this in the chat. So I'll give everyone just a moment um, to get this loaded on their phones or on their computer.
Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. So what is a strategic plan? This is just kind of a little bit of an overview. A strategic plan helps define the strategic direction of the organization. It establishes goals, objectives, and actions in line with SMART's vision and its mission. It promotes collaboration, collective responsibility, and probably most importantly, accountability. Uh, the 2019 strategic plan was adopted in November of 2019, and it's required to be updated every five years. So the plan that we're working on now will be our 2024 strategic plan. Next slide, please. Here's just a little bit on the process. Obviously, it starts with refining um, our objective areas, establishing goals, strategies, and actions. That will lead us into drafting the strategic plan and then ultimately at the end of the process, finalizing uh, the, strate the, the strategic plan once the board approves it. Um, next slide, please. So here's just kind of the, uh, the, the plan timeline. Um, started in January when we started with our SWOT analysis and reviewing of our strategic objectives. In February, we had two um, uh, workshops. We did ridership and pathways. And then here we are in March. Uh, yesterday, we had a COC workshop with our Citizens Oversight Committee. Uh, we're here tonight um, having uh, uh, strategic objective number three, which is extensions. And uh, we'll have uh, another community workshop on uh, freight, and that'll be later this month. Um, April to July, we are planning to get out and really uh, meet with the communities, get some, do some community presentations, get some additional feedback. In August, uh, more presentations in the community, and then also we'll be having another uh, Citizens Oversight Committee workshop on August 14th, 2024. September and October, <laughs> excuse me, uh, we'll do more community presentations, and we will begin drafting the strategic plan at that time. And then November through December, we will uh, COC will finalize a draft of the 2024 strategic plan, and then we plan to take that to uh, the Smart Board of Directors, likely in December, um, to approve a final uh, 2024 strategic plan. Next slide, please. I always think it's important to look at maybe some of the planning activities that we've done in the past. Obviously, we had the 2019 strategic plan in early 22, or 2022. We did some uh, strategic planning work where we conducted a SWOT analysis to determine the agency's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, we did a series of listening sessions. And ultimately, the board uh, utilized this information to create what we call the smart house. And we'll take a closer look at the smart house. Next slide, please. We are using uh, the smart house, as we call it, um, as the foundation of this strategic plan. Um, it outlines our values of safety, integrity, stewardship, and continuous improvement. It outlines our strategic objectives, those really important things that the agency needs to focus on, which is ridership, pathways, extensions, and freight. And here tonight, we're talking about extensions. It provides our mission statement, which is simply We Connect Communities, and the vision statement, which is Smarter Transportation for a Smarter Future. Next slide, please. So the reason that extensions are a one of our strategic objectives um, is because it's critically important that we complete this system. Measure Q language is very specific. It states in Measure Q, to provide funding for the design, construction, implementation, operation, financing, maintenance, and management of a passenger rail system and bicycle uh, pedestrian pathway connecting the 14 rail stations from Cloverdale to Larkspur. So we don't take this language lightly and we are working very hard to complete this system. And there's also some other reasons why it's important to complete the projects. Next slide. So first and foremost, SMART was designed to function as a completed system. Some stations are stronger as origins, while others are more like destinations. And that really depends on the balance of housing, jobs, schools, things like that. EIR ridership projections for SMART are based on a full system build out. Um, as we look at these extensions, Windsor is anticipated to be a strong origin station based on housing and job commute patterns to Santa Rosa and further south. Hillsburg is a major regional destination 
um, both for tourism and employees. Um, recent reports that we've seen, 85% of the workers commute into Hillsburg with 21% being from Santa Rosa and 11% of those workers coming from Windsor. Um, Cloverdale will serve as an interregional transit hub to the North Coast. Um, system completion is key to achieving SMART's full potential. A lot of times we see the things thrown out there where they say, well, the EIR estimate for ridership for um, SMART is 5,000 riders a day. They haven't hit that mark, and that is true. Um, but that number is based on a system that operates all the way from uh, Larkspur to Cloverdale. So it's critically important um, that we continue to march north and complete this system. Next slide, please. So before we get into a current update, I think it's important that we take a look at what we heard during the uh, 2022 listening sessions that we did on extension. During that session, we talked about Windsor, Cloverdale, Hillsburg, and the East-West alignment. And based on public, public feedback, um, we established some strategies at that time, and they have led to some significant progress. Next slide. Some of the strategies that um, we came up with in early 2022 um, for the Northern extensions being Windsor, Hillsburg, and Cloverdale was to conduct an updated market analysis, ridership, updated market, market ridership and freight analysis, continue to seek uh, federal and state capital grants, identify and clarify community and system benefits associated with the Cloverdale extension, get extensions north of Windsor into Plan Bay area. And then in regard to east-west alignment, um, continue participation in the Highway 37 corridor activities, work with partners to incorporate rail into the project, complete Caltrans rail service plan analysis, and partner with Caltrans on the FRA corridor ID program. So what have we accomplished? Well, I'm happy to report that we've secured $205 million in the past couple of years in grants to leverage our Measure Q funding. We have uh, started uh, construction on Petaluma North and we have reactivated construction uh, going to Windsor. We've secured $106 million of required funding for Hillsburg and East-West uh, Line was recently selected for the FRA Corridor ID program, which provided um, some additional dollars to do some planning work and, and, and develop the scope. And we are currently working with Caltrans on a rail service plan analysis um, for the uh, North-South alignment. Next slide, please. So let's take a, a, a close look at Windsor. Um, Windsor Extension is a three mile extension of rail and pathway. Um, this project will include a train platform as well as the parking lot. Um, as many of you know, construction began in 2020, uh, but due to RM3 litigation, the project was put on hold and we were able to uh, reactivate this project in November of 23. Currently, uh, we estimate that this project is about 40% complete and we estimate completing this uh, project in spring of 2025. And the 2006 EIR annual ridership uh, for Windsor Station was uh, 266,700 riders. Next slide. Taking a look at Hillsburg, um, the Hillsburg extension is 5.5 uh, miles of rail and pathway. And this project will include uh, the train platform as well as the replacement of the Russian River Bridge. Um, we anticipate beginning design on this project in the spring of 24. And in regards to funding, we still have a gap today, but we have secured $106 million um, for this extension. And we have uh, a, a grant campaign planned uh, to secure the remaining funds needed. And depending on the fund, we'll hear about those in different times, but um, we anticipate to receive notifications somewhere between June of 24 and June of 25. Uh, regarding station locations, there's been a lot of conversation about that lately, um, and City Council in February selected the existing Hudson Street Depot site um, as their preferred location. And uh, regarding ridership at Hillsburg, the 2006 EIR uh, estimate was uh, just about 105,000. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding Cloverdale, that's an 18-mile extension of rail and pathway. Um, this project will include additional vehicles as well as a rail yard in the Cloverdale area. Uh, the 2022 cost estimate for this project somewhere between 300 and 320 million, 
and we are actively seeking to complete the system, um, seeking funding to complete the system. And, you know, there is a new state law out there that gives SMART the authority to deliver projects using um, a process called progressive design build. And so that should allow delivery of the entire rail and pathway project completion as we receive funding. And the 2006 uh, EIR annual ridership estimate for Cloverdale was, <clears throat> excuse me again, was just about 25,000. Next slide, please. And so here's a question that I get a lot of times is what about Geyserville? Well, the current plan does not include a Geyserville station. Um, I've had to point out to several folks that um, it's not allowed under SMART's enabling legislation. Um, in SMART's enabling legislation, it states, in Sonoma County, north of Hillsburg, the district shall locate commuter stations only within incorporated areas. Um, we have been asked to take a look at, you know, kind of the feasibility um, of a Geyserville station. Um, it appears to us that it is feasible without negatively impacting our operations or the performance of the train. Um, it, as we do initial modeling, we see that there's likely going to be a train meet in the Geyserville area. Um, and as we've been out talking with folks, Geyserville community is really overwhelmingly supportive of a station, but um, it does require a legislative change uh, to remove this restriction. Next slide, please. And then moving on to the east-west passenger rail. Right now, Caltrans is leading this process. This project includes a 46-mile rail line, a capital corridor connection, and will obviously include new stations and new trains. Um, current status, this is an active freight line today. As many of you know, it is vulnerable to sea level rise. We have had flooding issues um, the past couple of years. Um, this alignment has been looked at in the past. There was a feasibility con uh, study conducted in 2019 that deemed this alignment to be feasible. And then in 2018 and 2023, um, it was identified in the California State Rail Plan. Um, happy to report in earlier, uh, earlier this year, in 2024, um, this alignment was selected for FRA's cap. cap FRE's Corridor Identification and Development Program um, for a Novato to Capital Corridor. Um, SMART owns, right away, owns this right away, but studies don't select operator or the technology at this time. Um, this could potentially even be operated as a Capital Corridor extension. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is where we have an opportunity to hear from you. This is where we will uh, utilize uh, Mintimeter. And uh, the question that I would ask just to get us started is what are you excited about for each of the extensions um, or um, what are some of the opportunities that you would see for each of the stations? And we will start with Windsor. And this one, you can just open up your Minty uh, meter on your phone or your computer and type in your responses. And as you do, they will populate on the screen. While we're waiting on uh, responses to come in, Danny, did you need to say something? Well, when I'm having trouble with the app and I know I'm getting old, um, but I wasn't clear on the question as like the basis of the question. What do you want us to talk about Windsor just in general? Yeah, or I was just starting it off, get everybody comfortable with the app of what are you excited about in regards to um, Windsor Station opening in 2025. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
David, did you have something? I, I have a question. I, I want to know what is Caltrans scope of work? Caltrans scope of work on the east-west alignment? Correct. They are developing the scope. The capital or the uh the uh um corridor ID program provided funding to develop the scope and then to take that through through the environmental process. So right now they are developing the scope of that project. I I I don't really understand what's left to be done. You know, the uh, smart completed what I consider to be a ridiculous study. Um, but besides that, what else is there to do? Well, David, this is how projects get into the federal system. And so it's identified in the state rail plan and to get into, um, to make this project eligible for future um, federal funding, it has to go through this process. Oh, boy. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So just a few things we saw up here. Bus connection to Hillsburg, Town Green, which is one of my favorite places. Um, service of a bedroom community. Great place to visit. It's exciting. Music on the green. I'm excited about the connection from Windsor to the ferry and points between. I'm hoping for later trains on Thursday nights during Windsor summer nights of the green concerts. Um, lots of commuters on 101, connection to town green events, getting to the town green. Short answer is very interested, love this, but we will need later trains for special events. Okay. All right, moving on, next slide. Same question, but what about Hillsburg? What is exciting about Hillsburg? What are you looking forward to? And um, what are some opportunities um, for this station as it opens in the future? Hey, let's see what we got here. Wine tasting, bike riding, boating on the Russian River. Platform should be close to Roundabout, not far away at Old Depot building. Connection for tourists um, from the Bay Area and those who travel to San Francisco who would love to travel north. Um, wine country. Oh, gosh. This will blow up, blow it up. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Cloverdale citizens would be more apt to visit Hillsburg when all of the extensions are completed. Um, affordable travel option. Um, can't wait to have another way to visit family and enjoy Hillsburg, which now feels too far for me to travel to. Wine tasting. Opportunity for San Francisco tourists to visit wineries in Hillsburg without driving on 101. Great stuff. Okay. Next slide. Okay, Cloverdale. What are we excited about in regards to Cloverdale? What do we think, what do we see as the opportunities for Cloverdale Station in the future? Bike trips. Great town, more visitors would come to Cloverdale, be on the map finally. Connections to express buses to Mendocino. 
Overdale extension, extension uh, needs MTC support. Needs to happen. We have a fair amount of housing going in. More people means more riders. It's a great connection for Mendocino and Lake County. Citrus Fair, access to affordable living. It's very unlikely you'll ever get funding for the Cloverdale extension based on passengers. Resident uh, connection to the rest of access to affordable living, bringing up the 101. Eddie, you can scroll down to see more of the answers as they come. Oh. Out. Or maybe Zoe. There you Zoe. go. Yeah. Very unlikely. Okay, I've already seen that one. Visit friends that live in Cloverdale, um, Mendocino and Lake Counties, residents connection to the rest of Sonoma County, since they are so far away, um, more of a threat. We won't get there, totally historical railroad. And then I think I already mentioned freeing up uh, the 101. Okay, great. Next slide, please. So, what are the what are the biggest obstacles to smart completing these extensions and what challenges should we be aware of? Who said one word answers are adequate? David, I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk at the end of um, the presentation. A few things coming in here. Funding's at the top of the list. Sales tax renewal. Recessions. Funding gaps. The ciders only drive. Cost escalation. Public sediment. Resident resistance. Youth aren't involved. Cost fair exceed. Cost fair exceed benefits. Community pushback, small population. Changing behavior. Interest, fares, station location. And the way that this works, the more that words are, are are utilized, they become the biggest words, the boldest words on their funding being at the top of the list, sales tax renewal and public sediment um, being at the top of the list right now. Okay, it looks like the results have stopped coming in. Okay. So with the the next question is, um, with the opening of extensions, how can we best plan service to meet passenger needs? And we're looking for things like, you know, the train schedule, service hours, frequency, transit connections, things of that nature. Um, how can we best plan for these as we look towards Windsor, um, Hillsburg, Cloverdale, and as far as that east-west uh, connection as well?
Okay, so to see a few of the things coming in, commuter service between Brazos and Novato to solve the Highway 37 problem. No idea how to answer this. Um, work with Sonoma County Transit to sync service with smart schedule, survey riders too. Connections to the north from Cloverdale. Um, transit connections will be key to each community, making it easier for passengers to get from the station to the downtown area of each community served. Um, schedules and frequencies need to serve both uh, commuting and leisure. Need to survey potential riders. Um, I want frequent weekend service so leisure trips can be easily planned, and it'd be great for trains to run more frequently and better connect with other transit. And can we, is there, are there more? Can we scroll down? Uh, more are coming in. Okay, thank you. Key frequencies to particular community needs. Schedules and frequencies need to serve both community and leisure trips. Hours of operation need to be long enough. Um, this seems to be a logistics issue that can be worked on and solved. This can be worked on while extensions are being planned and constructed. Need to coordinate with local transit, seamless first and last mile con connections, uh, community needs. Ask for community involvement through school districts. Great. Okay, I believe that. Okay, thank you. Um, now, which of the following, This I believe this is our last Mentimeter question, which of the following benefits will smart extensions bring to the community? And we're asking you to select your top three. So there's a list of uh, several on there, uh, such as improved mobility and access, improved quality of life, equity, economic vitality, greenhouse gas emission reductions, efficient land use and development, public health, and improved safety. And again, we're just asking you to select your top three. A okay, greenhouse gas uh, emission reductions at the top of the list, followed by improved mobility access, economic vitality, uh, improved quality of life, efficient land use and development. Public health is in there. Improved mobility and access and greenhouse gas emission reductions are very, very close right now. Looks like we're starting to slow down. So we have greenhouse gas emissions um, at the top, uh, followed closely by improved mobility access, and followed by improved quality of life, um, oh, excuse me, economic vitality, and then improved quality of life. And then we have equity and efficient land use and development um, tied with seven and public health as one. That's very good. All right, great information. Uh, I have an additional item that would have been good in there. Okay. Alternative to being stuck in traffic. Okay, that'd be good. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Nina, did you have something real quick? Sorry. That's all right. I'm a novice at Mentimeter. Um, is there going to be an opportunity to just speak about a few of the things that SMART can bring to my community, for example? You bet. 
and we can get at the very end of this we will have an open mic and you'll okay, be able to super thanks thank you okay well thank you for that information can we go to the next slide please and this is what everybody's been waiting for right it's open mic time uh please remember raise your hand to speak many of you have already figured out that raise hand feature um, again, just ask you to keep an open mind, be respectful of others, and allow time for others to speak. Again, I would ask you just to follow um, that two-minute rule. So we will start with David Shumbrum. Go ahead, David. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, uh, I'm uh, speaking for the Train Riders Association of California, and um, uh, uh, I, th I think uh, that uh, the biggest obstacle right now, which I could, didn't have enough words to enter into the program, is um, the resistance of public agencies to collaborate with the private sector. And I see this as the most realistic way to get service to uh, Cloverdale um, as part of a, a private sector effort to link up to Willits. Um, and so the uh, big issue that was identified was uh, funding uh, requirements to get to Cloverdale if you're if you're not looking for public sector funding for capital, that opens a lot of opportunities that um, are are currently not on the table because the the mentality of public agencies is to not even think about the private sector. So I I think that's a really huge piece of what Smart needs to deal with. Um, particularly if you want to have some kind of near-term success that you can show to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Documented. Uh, let's go with Daniel. Daniel Bell. Oh, thank you, Eddie. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to opening of the uh, Windsor station. But I have a question. Uh, when I'm down in Larkspur and I'm waiting for the train to go north, uh, the trains are sitting there and they're idling. And I'm wondering if that'll be the same thing uh, in Windsor. Uh, they'll be idling there and going south because there you have more residences close by, whereas in Larkspur it's probably not a problem. So I'm hoping that won't be a problem from residents to have that idling. The other question, you mentioned that Healdsburg will be a destination, and I certainly agree with that. Uh, love to go up there and and, and walk into town. And I hope that the um, uh, the platform is uh, closer to the uh, roundabout uh, rather than back at the, uh, the depot, uh, which is you know, a good quarter mile walk or more. So I would uh, hope that that would be the case. And then finally, you mentioned uh, you've already secured $106 million for the Healdsburg uh, extension, but then you mentioned the gap. Could you just give a ballpark of what the gap is? Thank you. Yeah, so we're we're the reason I was I was presenting earlier saying that we were sixty five percent funded um, with some of the projects we currently have going on with Windsor and some of the pathway projects. Um, we've seen some significant cost escalation, and so we just kind of backed off of that number. We're getting into the design now, um, and as we do that, we will get more clarification and and be able to come up with a. Um, you know, more precise um, estimate there. Um, but, you know, we're, we're roughly probably in the neighborhood to 55, 60% funded on that project at this time. Uh, let's go with Kurt. Okay, thank you. Um, as a Cloverdale resident, I'm um, uh, very excited about seeing Smart Train come up here. We've been paying uh, taxes on it now for years. Um, and I, I do like to see the uh, timeframes that are being uh, floated for Windsor and Healdsburg. Uh, what I would ask uh, as part of this next strategic plan is to is that the board put 
together some hard concrete dates for getting up to Cloverdale. And that gives you something to shoot for. Like any project, you got to have a kind of a, a timeline. And I know funding is an issue, but uh, I'd like to see in that strategic plan a, a concrete dates. Um, that's just a request. Uh, my, my other question is, and I, I saw MTA, um, I'm wondering how MTA affects funding of, of SMART or, or um, grants that come to SMART or don't come to SMART. How does MTA play into that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to assume you're referring to MTC. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, MTC. Um, you know, they do have an impact. Obviously, we've been very successful of getting grants out here lately, right? So we've, you know, got funding that's come through uh, um, from Regional Measure 3 money, which flowed through MTC for Windsor. Um, Hillsburg, we've been successful getting that. Um, where, where it really comes in is there's, there's what is called a... Um, regional transportation plan. And for some grants, especially federal grants, when you're trying to put in for those grants, one of the first questions it asks you is, are you in the regional transportation plan? If you're not in the regional transportation plan, you're not eligible to um, compete for those grants. And so right now today, none of our extensions north of Windsor are in that project. We are ac actively pursuing that um, to get um, uh, both Hillsburg and uh, and Cloverdale identified in that plan, um, but right now today they are not, and it does really hinder our ability to compete for some state grants and also all federal grants. So um, it 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 does play an issue for sure. And then, sorry, real quick follow up: who who would be the best uh, of our political um, politicians to to help us? So uh, Victoria Fleming um, is on the uh, is on the MTC um, commission, and also Director David Rabbit, who is a Sonoma County Supervisor, is an MTC commissioner. Thank you, yeah. Danny. You know, I I don't mean to be critical, and I am getting old, but I'm having trouble navigating the Mentimer system. Um, in the time frame that you're giving us, and that I encourage other people to speak, that they would have more room to, you know, give an opinion. Um, and then I'm just the app. If you're on the app at the same time as you're on, it just it takes you so many different places to subscribe, to buy this, to buy that. It's it's not intuitive um, to me. So I've had trouble navigating that, and it's probably just because I'm old. But I just wanted to give that feedback um, on maybe there's a small tutorial, <laughs> you know, for people like me who are not used to using apps that are constantly asking you to subscribe. So I just wanted to give that feedback. Otherwise, I'm just so all in. I, I have a great respect for you and everything that everybody is doing. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it doesn't do that on my phone, so I will check with IT to see what's up it's, with the It's kind of like when I was a, yes. I am a marketing professional, and the first thing I ask people to do is call yourself. Hmm. <laughs> see yeah. how easy it is to get hold of you. Yeah. <laughs> so this so, is kind of right within that bandwidth there. It's, okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I don't see any ads on my phone, but we will check into that and see what's going on. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Nina? I don't use Zoom that much anymore. Um, sorry about the delay. Um, I'm I'm actually speaking on behalf of uh, the Cloverdale Chamber of Commerce, and we have 230 plus members. And Clover, the Smart provides access, just capital A C C E S S, and it's access to education for our youth. It's access to medical services for those people uh, that have to drive the 101 corridor to, to get to those things. Jobs back and up, getting people to employers and getting, um, and getting people to come into Cloverdale from parts south and north. I think it's really important that the, the hub between Mendocino and Lake County be considered. It's, um, 
it's it allows lots and lots of opportunities without clogging our highways. It's freight is definitely an option, especially for Cloverdale. We have some pretty um, big lumber type companies here. I'd like to involve them in the process if at all possible. Um, it just it 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 for for many many years, and I know this is a sob story. Um, Cloverdale's been sort of an also ran and getting the train here will show people what a beautiful town it is. Ridership is not going to support the cost of extending service to Cloverdale, but once you're here, you probably will want to stay because it is great. <laughs> and it, economically, it just makes sense from a resident's perspective and an employee employer perspective. So I appreciate your time. And one other quick thing, I, I just read that Cloverdale drivers, um, they have the highest miles driving within Sonoma County, which stands to reason. So anyway, take that into consideration. Thanks. Thank you, appreciate that. Rick Lutman. Uh, thank you, Eddie. I wanna talk about uh, the prospect, although it may be distant in the future, uh, that SMART may be involved with other public or private enterprises in uh, freight and possibly even passenger service north of Cloverdale up into Mendocino County. Now this might be a decade or so in the future, but I think there's one thing we should be worried about now, and that is protecting that railroad track that uh, runs between Cloverdale and Willits. Uh, once it's gone, it'd be extremely difficult and very unlikely to get back. Um, the track is there. It's it's uh, it's not in use now. It would need some work to be fixed up. The problem is that the um, uh, Great Wood Red, Redwood Trail people have their eye on it, and they're talking about um, tearing it up or covering it up. And uh, I think we need to, to resist that very strongly. Uh, there's no reason that the trail can't be built beside the track, just as uh, SMART is doing building a track, uh, a, a trail beside the track all the way from Larkspur to Cloverdale. Thank you. Thank you. Connor? Uh, thanks, Eddie. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Um, yeah, great, great presentation. I live in Healdsburg, so kind of like Kurt um, and Nina patiently awaiting for the extension up north. Um, I think to kind of touch on Kurt's point, a lot of this, obviously the biggest obstacle that we've all identified is the funding and the sales tax extension. Sales tax extension. Um, but beyond that, I think we kind of need to uncover the true obstacle, and that's kind of just the culture and the 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 perception of smart and i think just it's important to kind of separate your marketing outreach approaches as we approach the sales tax extension ballot measure in santa rosa and in windsor and in cities that and in marin county obviously as well in cities that have already been serviced by the smart train and also those cities that have not because i'm afraid that folks in Healdsburg and Cloverdale have so far felt kind of like, um, yeah, we've been paying for this, but we haven't really necessarily directly seen the benefits of it. And I am the biggest fan of smart out of any of my family or friends. So I will 100% go to bat for smart and the extension of the sales tax. Um, but it would be easier to kind of have a separate set of talking points, responses to complaints, um, that are kind of specifically geared towards folks who have not had smart directly serve their community. Um, yeah. And I just generally want to support everything that everybody else said as well. And again, uh, echoing Danny's sentiment, huge respect for you, Eddie and your whole, whole staff. Um, a part of my ability to completely go to bat for smart is my utmost confidence in um, everyone at smart and they're just working their butts off to, extend and to provide a great service for everybody so um, just want to help spread the word about all of that stuff thank you yeah thank you i appreciate that good points matt oh, 
sorry oh, one, one more question uh i forgot what is progressive design build you mentioned that about geyserville i believe yeah there's been a there's there's been a term for a long long time that's been called design build uh, it's been a you know just kind of a format that we've gone through projects and completed projects what progressive allows it allows you to kind of work as as funding comes available so it's kind of a start stop type thing but provides a little bit more flexibility to make progress um and allows us just to kind of make steady progress over time does that make sense yep for sure okay. thank you thank you matt uh yeah my uh question is um about volunteerism um the previous gentleman spoke about the extension past uh cloverdale you know maintaining some kind of minimal um presence there and and uh, in general um what is smart doing to uh, to leverage the the rail community who would love to volunteer for for these kinds of projects well right now we have an agreement with uh, golden gate rail museum um, they are currently running rail bikes or getting to soon to start running rail bikes um, from cloverdale north so that's one of the things that we're doing to make sure that we're maintaining that area and providing um, some level of use up there. Well, also as the president of the um, Redwood Empire Live Steamers, uh, we would we would love to uh, participate with you um, as a uh, volunteer organization. And I know quite a few of the guys over at the um, NWP Historical Society are interested not only in that um, corridor, but um, volunteering in any way that they can to make SMART as successful as possible. Thank you, I appreciate that information. Rachel? I think I'm on, on mute, right? Um, You're on, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm in, up in Cloverdale. I'm a fairly new resident here, five years. Um, we we love the community. Um, I have driven by the station here now for, I believe, 25 years, maybe. I understand it wasn't built for SMART. It was built as a train station, and the trains never came. Um, so I'm really hoping the train SMART manages to make it up here. Um, I lived in Livermore before this. I paid into the BART system for over 40 years, and we got bypassed um, in favor of San Jose, who never paid a penny into the system and now has, I believe, two stations. Um, I don't think that will happen here, but I also want to reinforce how important it is to bring to a community like Cloverdale. Um, we're growing. I do believe it will continue to grow. I mean, right now, Baumgartner Ranch is, I think, started and it will have close to 300 units there. Um, I think 70 plus units will be apartment type units. Most of the time, those people are looking for work. They're, work, they're not going to be working in Cloverdale. They're going to be commuting. If they can possibly get on a train from Cloverdale to Healdsburg, Windsor, Santa Rosa, it would make a huge difference in their lives. I can see it making a difference in uh, kids that are planning to attend community college in Santa Rosa, um, of being able to get on the train and go down there because maybe they don't have a means of transportation. I currently have one neighbor who, um, for various reasons, can't get a driver's license. Um, she happens to have two homes, so she's staying in her other one right now because she can't stay in Cloverdale because she has no means of getting around. If she was in Cloverdale and the train was here, she could hop on that train and go down to Healdsburg or to her doctor's appointments or where she needs to go. And I think my last point has to do with Healdsburg. Um, I also have connections there. My grandparents lived there. My parents lived there. We still have a family home there. Um, their choice of station, I hope you can get them to change their mind. It, my, my uncle 
was part of Northwestern Pacific Railroad. He lived on Hudson Street. His house is still there. Doesn't look like it did when I was a child, but it, it's still there. Um, I've been to events at the Hudson Street Winery and at, uh, Fo I believe it's Fog Belt, right? Um, parking's almost impossible now. It's it's crazy. And I don't believe that those people that live in the neighborhoods surrounding there are going to be really happy with cars parking on the street in front of their house for hours at a time. They they need a location downtown. It just makes more sense to have them be downtown. So anyway, that's that was my contribution. I'm looking forward to SMART making it to Cloverdale. Um, Windsor first, Healdsburg's next, then Cloverdale. But um, you've got a happy rider here and I'll be glad to help in whatever way I can. Thank you. Valerie? Oh, Valerie disappeared. Here we go. Okay, oh, you, there can... you are. Go ahead, I... Valerie. Yes, thank you. Um, in uh, I want to make a comment on the person that just spoke and ask you a question. Um, smart isn't going to is is smart going to be having conversations with Healdsburg City Council people and Healdsburg staff about changing the decision that was made. Or is it a done deal? I hope. But I need to know as a Healdsburg person that th this decision is made and you're not going to be trying to change their minds. Can you tell me that? Yeah, we're, we, we, you were there at, I believe you were there at the meeting. I mean, oh, yes. Yeah. I was. But I want to know from you are you guys going to continue to have? What, what, you know, discussions with just the staff or council members to, well, maybe you should change it. No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Arnold. Uh, a couple of comments in your uh, response to a question about the MTC pulling the extension to Healdsburg, Cloverdale, and Citizen City out of plan Bay Area 2050, you failed to mention why they pulled it out, which was staff had done an analysis. You can argue whether the analysis was any good, but they did an analysis of the costs and ridership benefits associated with those extensions. And they said the benefits, could the, the costs were, were exceedingly high and the benefits were limited. And this points to pointing to a 2006 EIR ridership analysis that was done before SMART ever got funded. There's been seven years of operations. Is there any in, a, intention of SMART updating its ridership estimates for these extensions before you go forward so people can assess what you really think is you posted EIR numbers, you posted annual numbers. I assume those are both on, I don't know, but I assume those are both the boardings and alightings. No, they're boardings. And and, uh, and Airport Boulevard was not a station in that EIR. And so one would expect a certain amount of cannibalization of those going to Airport Boulevard. They're going to get on the train in Windsor. And the real question is, in terms of benefits is we're spending over a hundred million dollars on this extension. What is really going to be the net increase in ridership? And we don't have that number because an analysis hasn't been done for 18 years. And it seems now appropriate that SMART should do such an analysis, certainly got money in the bank to do it. And why not? You actually have actual ridership figures and you can use those ridership figures to estimate more accurately than Parsons Brinkerhoff did in 2006 what the ridership potential is of uh, these extensions. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Rick Lutman. Uh, thank you, Eddie, for giving me another chance to speak. I wanted to talk this time about the East-West extension. I assume that because Measure Q didn't say anything about um, going east, that you wouldn't be able to use the tax money 
that you're getting um, to do anything there. But in any case, I, I think there's two important reasons to try to develop that track. Smart owns the track between Novato and, and uh, Brazos, and you're using it now for freight. Um, it seems to me it's, it's just a natural thing to create a commuter service there so that the people who live in the um, relatively more affordable areas around uh, uh, Vallejo uh, can get to jobs in Marin and relieve some of the traffic on Highway 37. Um, east of Brazo, somebody else owns the track, but Smart uses it. And personally, as a resident of Roner Park, I would love to be able to ride by train all the way across to Sassoon where I could connect with the national railroad system. So I'm, uh, I know it's a long way in the future, but I hope that uh, someday we can do that. Great, thank you. David? Um, a quick additional comment in response to um, Mike Arnold. Um, I very much agree with him uh, as to cost benefit analyses um, not being good for these extensions. And this is precisely why uh, TRAC is urging, my organization, the train riders or TRAC, is urging you to look at uh, collaboration with the private sector. They have a completely different model for doing uh, the rehabilitation of rail lines where they don't replace everything. And if you keep the costs way down, um, that changes your cost benefit ratios dramatically. Um, and so things become feasible that aren't feasible with um, the model that SMART has used for its construction to date. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It looks like our hour is up. No further hands. I don't see any hands raised. Next slide, please. So next steps, um, we want your participation and input. Um, if there's something that comes up, something else you would like to share, we have an online comment form. Uh, the link is right there. Um, and then we have another up, uh, upcoming online community workshop. That'll be from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That'll be on Wednesday, March 27th. That'll be our fifth workshop. Um, and we will be talking about freight um, through the spring and summer months of 24, we will have ongoing community outreach. Um, we plan in fall of 24 to draft the plan, and we'll also have an additional uh, Citizens Oversight Committee uh, public workshop. And then winter of 2024, uh, we will finalize uh, the strategic plan. Next slide, please. Could you so, put that link in the chat, please? Can somebody accomplish that? Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, we will throw that in the chat. Um, I want to once again thank everyone for attending tonight's workshop. Um, I think we collected a lot of valuable information that will go a long way in uh, developing a great 2024 strategic plan. Um, again, thank you all very much. Really appreciate everyone's participation. Have a great night. See you.